Country music may not be the first genre that comes to mind when you think of Halloween. There aren't really any iconic songs like Michael Jackson's Thriller that are on everyone's playlist during this time of year, but there are plenty of ghost stories, murder ballads, and other songs that certainly capture the spirit of Halloween. And a lot of those songs have very interesting stories behind them that are based in reality. So let's take a look. Here are the top 10 Halloween-themed country songs as voted on by members of the Honky Tonk History Facebook group. Coming in at number 10 on our list is The Highwaymen by The Highwaymen. The Highwaymen was a country music supergroup that formed in 1985, featuring Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, Johnny Cash, and Waylon Jennings. They named the group after their first single, Highwaymen. What exactly is or was a highwayman? It was a term used during the 18th and 19th centuries, primarily in Europe, to describe a robber typically on horseback who held up travelers along public roads. The song was written by Jimmy Webb in 1977. After a late night of drinking, Webb went to sleep and had what he described as an incredibly vivid dream. I had an old brace of pistols in my belt and I was riding hell bent for leather down these country roads with sweat pouring off my body. I was terrified because I was being pursued by police who were on the verge of shooting me. It was very real. I sat up in bed sweating through my pajamas. Even without thinking about it, I stumbled out of bed to the piano and started playing Highwaymen. Within a couple of hours, I had the first verse. The song tells the story of a soul with four different incarnations in four different places and time. Starting with Willie Nelson as an actual highwayman who is hung for his crimes, only to be reincarnated as a sailor who met his end at sea in a verse sung by Christopherson. The character returns in a verse by Waylon Jennings as a dam builder working on the Hoover Dam in the 1930s who falls to his death and is forever entombed in the wet concrete. Johnny Cash takes the final verse in which the character travels through space when he is reincarnated as the captain of a starship in the distant future. Johnny Cash had the first choice of which verse to record. He chose the last verse about the starship captain because Marty Stewart told him that was the coolest one. Number nine on our list is Marie Laveau by Bobby Bear. In 1974, Shel Silverstein and Baxter Taylor wrote a song using the name of the famous voodoo queen of New Orleans, Marie Laveau. One of the most popular figures in New Orleans paranormal lore, Laveau's powers reportedly included healing the sick, extending altruistic gifts to the poor, and overseeing spiritual rites. The song has absolutely nothing to do with the real life Marie Laveau, and simply uses her name due to her popularity. Recorded by Bobby Bear in 1974, the song is sort of a comedic ballad that tells the story of a fictitious, ugly witch that lives somewhere in the Louisiana Bayou country who can make men disappear with a horrific screech. One night, a character named Handsome Jack shows up and makes her a deal. If she can conjure up a million dollars for him, he'll marry her. After she gives him the money, Jack backs out of the deal and tells her that she's too damn ugly for a handsome man like him. In retaliation, the witch does her horrible shrieking thing and Jack disappears. The song was Bobby Bear's only number one hit and stayed on the charts for a total of 18 weeks. Number eight on our list is Knoxville Girl by the Leuven Brothers. Knoxville Girl is without a doubt one of the most descriptive murder ballads that have ever been recorded in any genre of music. The gruesome lyrics of this song will put any gangster rap song to shame when it comes to pure brutality. First recorded by Arthur Tanner in 1925, it has been recorded by a variety of artists in a variety of genres over the last century, with the most popular recording being that of the Leuven Brothers on their 1956 album, Tragic Songs of Life. The song is derived from the 19th century Irish ballad, The Wexford Girl, itself derived from the earlier English ballad, The Bloody Miller or Hanged I Shall Be, about a murder in 1683 at Hogstow Mill, 12 miles south of Shrewsbury. Other versions are known as the Waxweed Girl, the Wexford Murder, 
These are in turn all derived from an Elizabethan era poem, The Cruel Miller. The song tells the story of a fellow that meets a girl in Knoxville, Tennessee and spends every Sunday evening at her house. One day they go for a walk and for reasons unexplained, he picks up a stick and just starts beating her. She begs for her life, but he ignores her plea. He continues to beat her even more viciously and doesn't stop until the ground around him is covered with her blood. He dumps her dead body into the river, then returns home, fending off his mother's queries about his stained clothes and insisting it's only a nosebleed. After a tortured night, he's thrown in jail for the rest of his life. And like any good country murder ballad, his last words are to assure the listener he really did love this girl. Number seven on our list is probably one of the most popular songs, Ghost Riders in the Sky. The song was written in 1948 by Stan Jones, who worked for the National Park Service in Death Valley, California. As the guide for a group of Hollywood scouts who were looking at potential locations for filming, he sang Ghost Riders in the Sky when they wanted to hear a sample of campfire music. That opened the door to Hollywood for Jones and launched his career as a songwriter and a film and television actor. The song was first recorded by pop singers of that time, such as Bean Crosby, Burl Ives, and Frankie Lane. It didn't really cross over into country music territory until 1949, when it was recorded by the Sons of the Pioneers and was soon followed with a version from Gene Autry. The song is about a cowboy who has a vision of red-eyed, steel-hooved cattle thundering across the sky, being chased by the spirits of damned cowboys. One warns him that if he does not change his ways, he will be doomed to join them forever, trying to catch the devil's herd across these endless skies. Jones later stated he had been told the story when he was 12 years old by an old Native American man who resided northeast of the Douglas, Arizona border town. The Native Americans, possibly Apache, who lived within Cochise County, believe that when souls vacate their physical bodies, they reside as spirits in the sky, resembling ghost riders. One day he related this story to Wayne Hester, a boyhood friend. As both boys were looking at the clouds, Stan shared what the old Native American had told him. Looking in amazement as the cloudy shapes were identified as the ghost riders that years later would be put into lyrics. The song has been recorded countless times and in multiple languages over the years by everyone from the Lawrence Welk Orchestra to the actor Christopher Lee. Members of the Western Riders of America would later name Ghost Riders in the Sky as the greatest Western song of all time. Number six on our list is Psycho by Eddie Nowak. Written by the great Leon Payne, who wrote country standards like Lost Highway for Hank Williams and I Love You Because, Psycho is quite a departure from either of those classics. The song is a confession of sorts as its narrator calmly tells of murdering his ex, her new lover, strangling a puppy, beating a little girl to death with a wrench, and ultimately his own mother, whose corpse he is apparently singing to the whole time. The song's origins go back to the spring of 1968, when Leon Payne and a friend were discussing the Richard Speck murders. Speck murdered eight student nurses in Chicago in July of 1966 and was convicted and sentenced to death the following year. Being a history buff, Payne was familiar with the cases of many notorious mass killers, and the discussion soon turned to other famous cases, Charles Whitman, Ed Gein, Mary Bell, and Albert Fish. That conversation directly inspired the song, and Payne immortalized his friend, Jackie White, by naming the boyfriend killed in the first verse after him. Although the song Psycho was never a hit and initially sank into obscurity, today various versions can be found on YouTube, including the original Eddie Nowak version. It's also become a favorite cover song for many alt-country bands that skew to the weirder and darker side of the genre thus proving a great country song will always find its audience. Number five on our list is Phantom 309 by Red Savine. 
Right. Red Savine released the song Phantom 309 in 1967, almost a decade before CB trucking songs became all the rage. It's about a haunted 18-wheeler and is based on the true story of an accident that took place on January 29, 1963 in Troy, New Hampshire, when a truck driver hauling 4,600 gallons of gasoline intentionally crashed his rig to avoid hitting a school bus full of children. The song is a first-person narrative by a hitchhiker who's trying to return home from the West Coast. After three days at a crossroads in the pouring rain, he flags down a tractor trailer driven by a guy named Big Joe. Big Joe drives through the night and drops the narrator off at a truck stop, giving him a dime for a cup of coffee before heading off into the darkness. The narrator walks into the truck stop and tells the waitress about Big Joe's generosity. She lets him know that he was picked up by a ghost driver and that 10 years later at that very same intersection where he was picked up, Big Joe swerved to avoid hitting a school bus full of children. He lost control of his truck and was killed in the wreck. The urban legend part about being picked up by phantom truckers is up to you to believe, but the story of the crash itself was absolutely true. In 2014, residents of Troy, New Hampshire, where the accident took place, erected a monument to the real-life Big Joe, a man named Pete Trudell. The inscription reads, Troy's hero. Just below are the words, Greater love hath no man than this to lay down one's life for his fellow man. Tommy Fell wrote the song in 1966, and it has been covered dozens of times by dozens of artists since. If you're around my age, you might recognize the story as it provided the inspiration for Large Marge in the movie Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's one of the most popular trucking songs and serves as a great example of how a song can be part truth and part legend. The only gospel song on our list comes in at number three with Lonely Tombs, as performed by Hank Williams on the Mother's Best Flower Show in 1951. The song itself dates back to sometime in the late 1800s and was written by songwriter William M. Golden, who had written other popular gospel favorites such as Where the Soul of Man Never Dies, another song Hank was also fond of performing on his radio shows. Old-time groups such as the Blue Sky Boys were among the first to record the song in the 1930s. It was a feature selection of the Stanley Brothers when they began doing their radio work on WCYB in Bristol, Virginia in the mid-1940s. It's a short ballad about a cemetery visitor who receives a cautionary message from a voice beyond the grave. They tell him that they once lived, walked, and talked as he did, but they were soon called away from this world to the next telling the visitor that he too will soon be amongst the dead in the graveyard. It's probably one of the most eerie gospel songs I've ever heard, and coming from Hank Williams, who died at the age of 29, makes it all that more haunting. Coming in at number two on our list is Long Black Veil by Lefty Frizzell. Recorded and released in 1959, Long Black Veil is a song from the perspective of the deceased. A man who has been ex executed for murder based on circumstantial evidence who could have been exonerated had he only spoke up, but couldn't because he was having an affair with his best friend's wife the night the murder occurred. Opting to die and take the secret of their relationship to his grave, he is sent to the gallows to die for a crime he knowingly didn't commit. The chorus describes the woman's visits to his gravesite wearing a long black veil and enduring a wailing wind. Written by Danny Deal and Mary John Wilkin, Long Black Veil was written based on three sources of inspiration. Red Foley's recording of God Walks These Hills With Me, a newspaper article about an unsolved murder of a New Jersey priest who was actually murdered under a town hall light in full view of over 50 witnesses, and the legend of a mysterious woman who regularly visited 1920s Italian actor Rudolph Valentino's grave, leaving red roses each time. Lefty Frizzell's recording of the song was a deliberate departure from his traditional honky-tonk sound 
and an attempt to move towards the growing popularity of folk style ballads that were emerging in Nashville at the time. The song peaked at number six on the country charts and would be Lefty's best performing single in five years. In 2019, Lefty's recording of Long Black Veil was selected by the Library of Congress for preservation in the National Recording Registry for being culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. Number one on our list should come as no surprise. It's David Allen Coe with The Ride. It's probably the most popular ghost song in country music, and it's without a doubt one of the most popular Hank Williams tribute songs. It started out as a co-write early one evening with Gary Gentry and J.B. Dederline. The two were attempting to write a tribute song to Hank and were unsatisfied with what they had come up with, so Gentry lit some candles and decided he was going to summit the spirit of Hank Williams himself. By his own admission, Gary did some drinking in those days. He said, quote, I lit candles in the living room and I wanted Hank to show himself. I wanted to write a masterpiece about Hank and I was mad and I was drunk. Thank God I haven't had a drink since 1984, but in those days it was pretty wild. After doing all the things he thought one should do when trying to summon a spirit, he looked down the hallway and saw what appeared to be the ghost of Hank Williams shirtless sitting on his couch. At around 4 a.m. that morning, The Ride was written. The last line of the song, and perhaps the most well-known and maybe one of the best hooks in all of country music songwriting, had a different origin, though. Some years prior to all these events, Gary was working as a truck driver, and while passing through Nashville one evening, decided to stop by Hank's old house on Franklin Road. He knocked on the door, and to his surprise, Audrey answered. She offered to show him around the house and told him some stories about Hank. As he was leaving, he told Audrey that he was an aspiring songwriter and hoped that one day he would be able to write a song as good as Mr. Williams did. Audrey smiled and said, you don't have to call him Mr. Williams. The whole world called him Hank. If you big star bound, let me warn you, it's a long, hard ride. 